you guys weren't quite sure what's happening here, we simply need to memorize that this is a, ne a necessary second step for ozonolysis. This is not a mechanism that's too important to worry about. We won't worry about the mechanism here. But you do need to memorize that after the oxidation in step one using the ozone, there has to be a reduction step. And this is the reduction that's usually used. I think it's also sometimes they use zinc and acetic acid, but maybe this is more common. So your instructor wants you to know, this is, we'll just memorize this is the second step of an ozonolysis without worrying about the mechanism. All right, so that actually should have been easy because we're cleaving a carbon-carbon bond. And this is pretty much the only way we know how to do it. All right, and then, um, you were almost ready to declare victory then, but then we caught ourselves and said, who does this operate on? Well, it operates on an alkene, and this is not an alkene. So you had to say to yourself, first of all, I need to make this into an alkene. So that was very good. And you thought of doing that with a strong, bulky base. So what type of reaction are you thinking of using there? B2. Yeah. That's a really good way to make something into an alkene. And you're right. This is the best reagent of the ones they gave us as a strong bulky base for doing that. OK, and I think that basically uh, you were hoping that this was going to, to do it uh, for us. Now, the mistake that we're making here is remember, it wasn't good enough to say ozonolysis. You had to ask, what functional group does ozonolysis react on? Well, what types of functional groups is this going to react on? What do we need as a starting material? This isn't going to work on any old thing. What do we need in order for this to attack to get an E2? For example, would this give us an E2 with this? Apparently and if not, what's missing? <laughs> I guess not, but... <laughs> you have to put it in something that it won't react with? Or... Well, uh, we, we need a good solvent, that's but true. I always feel like it's ethanol or something. That's right. Now here, we don't need to worry about solvents because all we need to do is pick um, the right multiple choice out of the boxes. <laughs> so uh, presumably they're using some solvent here that will not interfere with this reaction. D. My question is... Pardon? You have to use the aprotic, right? So it doesn't pick up a protic. Yeah, we would want to use an aprotic uh, solvent here. That's right. So maybe they might use acetone or THF. Okay. But we don't need to worry about the solvent because um, that they, they didn't put the solvent in this, in this box. Oh, okay. So we can just assume that they're using a, a decent solvent. My, my point was, what, this molecule will not react with this base. Okay. What, what do it, what's it missing? What do we need to put on there in order to do an E2? Now, it's got lots of H's, right? They're just hidden hydrogens. Well, try, try drawing the mechanism. Is it because it's alkene, right? Or help? Yeah. What are we missing? We're missing a leaving group. Yeah. Right? One thing that should have jumped out of this here is there are no functional groups here. That should have said, said how, how are we going to do anything to this if there's no functional groups? You can't do it. Uh, there's very few things you can do when there's no functional groups. Can we add just water to it? put J on Add water to here? Yeah. Now, the problem is, since there's no functional groups, water won't react with this. Um, so maybe now, you basically, so you have to ask, first thing you have to do is put in a functional group. And you really only learned one way to put in a functional group to a molecule with no functional groups. Yeah, HPR. What about BO2? Then now, we get to common. So um, someone proposed E, HBR. That would react on an alkene, but it won't react if there's no functional groups at all. Oh, it, we have to. It's the one that Dr. K kept saying, right? There's only one way to make something gas with halogenation, right? Yeah, that sounds right. And then I don't remember how to halogenate. Is it HCl? So what we need here is the radical halogenation. Yeah, that's what we need. Oh, so we need heat, J. There you go. Yay! <laughs> 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 Three times, I said oh, J. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear you oh, sorry. <laughs> OK. So um, now. I know it didn't seem easy when we were going through it the first time, but that first step in retrospect is easy because that's the only thing you learned in the course that will react with a molecule with no functional groups. As soon as we see that this has no functional groups, even if we didn't, even if we didn't know what product we were trying to make, even without seeing the product we're trying to make, as soon as we see the starting material, we've got to start with the radical halogenation because we haven't learned anything else in the course that you can do to a molecule with no functional groups. All right, so we can start here with the Br2 and heat. Now, let's draw what the, what the next intermediate would be from this step. Now what we want to do is make sure that this is really going to work. Um, so let's draw what the intermediate would be. What would we get if we reacted this with this? Uh, there, there is a mechanism for this, but at this point in the course, I don't know if it's worth taking the time to go through this radical mechanism. So maybe we'll just try to draw the, the product from this step. How will our starting material react with the Br2 and heat?
Oh, and you guys said you, you don't get extra paper during the exam? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. we can draw all over the exam. We just but no extra paper. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, you can use the, 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 the flip side. So you want to make sure when you're, um, so I, I guess you, you can work on the back side with your blank, right? Yeah. So it's very important not to try to cram your pictures into tiny little corners. Um, you want to take as much, uh, as much space as you can to draw a good picture. So let's draw the next picture. What are we going to get after we use the BR2? So this is going to leave us with we need a, BR a radical here. and then a, just a BR like this. negative, right? Oh, like that? So it sounds like you guys are trying to go through the mechanism. That's okay if you like. Um, but uh, that, that's actually a good instinct to try to remember the mechanism. Um, but uh, I don't know if we're going to have time to go over all the mechanisms today. Oh, yeah, yeah. So perhaps you can just get to the, the product. So it'll go like yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now, it, it really wouldn't be good to take some time to review this mechanism, but um, we probably, maybe that's not the best use of our time together right now. Yeah. yeah. We don't have to know that. I just was having trouble getting. It's good to think about it, though. So this is a very simple reaction. This is a substitution where we've substituted the bromine for the hydrogen that used to be on this carbon. And you may as well put the bromine on carbon 1 or on carbon 6 so that you're going to be consistent with what we're going to do over here. All these carbons are symmetrical anyway. So I'll put it over here. Yeah. That's right. Uh, it's possible, maybe, uh, that we could, uh, with uh, more extreme conditions or excess bromine, get two bromines on. But we don't want that here. We only want one. So we'll get one bromine on. So the mechanism here is first an initiation step where this splits into two bromine radicals. And then there is a propagation step where uh, a bromine takes a hydrogen off of here. And a second propagation step where another bromine joins in. But maybe you won't spend the time to go through the details of that. Just drawing the product from a radical halogenation is pretty simple. You just replace a hidden hydrogen with the bromine. All right, and like I said, in retrospect, this step was obvious because this is the only thing we know how to do with the starting material with no functional groups. So we've got to start with this regardless of what our ultimate product is. Okay, uh, and what should be the next reagent that we add? The bulky base to make Now we're ready for this. So this is what I was asking before. What type of functional group do we need to start with in order for this to attack? Well, we need just something with a good leaving group. Something with a good leaving group, and now we have the good leaving group. All right, now here we should actually draw the mechanism. So let's try to draw the mechanism of the product from this next step. That's the right product. Oh, did you draw the mechanism? I didn't see. Uh, so that goes there, and this yeah. goes So there's a problem with that uh, mechanism. So you got the right intermediate. There's a problem with that mechanism. This is one of the most important reactions, so this is a good mechanism. Everything you put in there is right, but there was something that was left out. Well, let's go through. Oh, that. I know what it was left out. Can you tell me how to do that? Well, we'll go through it. The charge I left out, right? Ah, that might. Uh, let's see. Something even more important. Uh, all right. So, um, yeah. What, what did you draw there? You drew. Yep. That doesn't make sense. All right. So, <laughs> is this acting like this is going to act like a base, right? Yeah. What, is, what do bases do? What's the bronsted lowery definition of a base? Right, but I think what you drew is you had this taking off the bromine. Yeah, I did. Okay, so a base is going to take the proton. Who's it going to take the proton from? From the beta carbon. So remember, our very first step here should have been to label the alpha and the beta carbon. Anytime you're doing an elimination, you should always label the alpha and the beta carbon. The alpha carbon is the one with the leaving group, and the beta carbon is one that's adjacent to it. doesn't matter which beta carbon we focus on here because they're symmetrical. Here's the alpha carbon, the one with the leaving group, and here's the beta carbon that's next to it. So the base is going to take the beta hydrogen. So the base does not attack the alpha carbon. It attacks the beta hydrogen. That's a common mistake. Now that frees up these electrons to move over here. 
However, that would break the octet rule at the alpha carbon unless the leaving group left. So it just leaves on its own? Well, it, it's actually being forced by this arrow okay. here. That's, so in this that's case, what confused right. And then you get the plus and then the plus folds down <coughs> to make the double bond, right? Uh, let's see. Well, I don't think we will have any positive charges here. So these three arrows are happening simultaneously because this is an E2 reaction. All of these things happen at the same time. If it was an E1 reaction, oh, 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 this would happen first, and then these two things would happen. So in E2, all these things happen simultaneously. 